Hey guys, welcome to Data Tech, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will be talking about untapped power of LLMs beyond question answering or chatbots. Today, the tech giants are using LLMs or Gen AI along with their traditional ML side by side. Gen AI and traditional ML, they are not two separate worlds. The two are complementary each other. The two are working in unity with each other. In today's video, we will be looking at six, seven such use cases from tech giants, how they are using Gen AI efficiently and just not for question answering or chatbots, but beyond it to improve their day to day use cases. So let's get started. First, I will talk about search. Search is a age old problem and normally in search engines, the queries are classified as head, torso and tail queries. The head queries, if I take example of e-commerce are the highly popular search terms. These are sort, generic and highly popular. Example are shoes or laptops. Torso queries are the mid range in popularity. They are typically two to three words long. For example, running shoes, gaming laptops. They are less competitive than the head queries, but drive significant traffic. And the last one are the tail queries. These are, these consist of majority of total searches, but per query frequency is low. And one of the reason these are least popular or the reason they are tail queries because the system is not able to understand the intent properly. So what Misho did for improving their performance in tail queries was they used LLMs. In search query understanding LLMs provide significant gains in handling long tail queries particularly for Misho's users from tier 3 cities correcting misspellings, removing redundant words, translating queries from Indian languages to English. This improved retrieval and ranking efficiency. So what they did was they did the spelling correction, they did translation or transliteration, removing redundant keywords, rewriting them to frequently used queries. You can see the examples of this input which are misspelled queries or sometimes it's vernacular, sometimes it's romanized that is it's in vernacular language but with English alphabets. And this is what the LLM will provide. It will provide clean corrected queries. Uh, and what can happen because of this, let's say this is a tail query, but after the correction, it can become one of the head or uh, torso query, which is already popular and we know which products needs to be mapped to that query. So uh, what Misho did was they did the query correction for this tail queries, which resulted in significant gain. I will talk about how they productionized it or how any company productionizes such use cases when they are using LLMs because we know LLMs have slow inference rate. They can't be used in real time, but what can be efficiently done? So we can use the uh, goodness of LLMs in our models. I will talk about it in next to next slide. Uh, so we saw that for tail queries, query correction is one thing for head queries. What companies do is they do query expansion. For example, let's say the query is run wireless headphone. It can be extended to best wireless headphone for running, sweat proof, noise cancellation, lightweight, long battery life, Bluetooth. The reason is we know if someone is looking for wireless headphone, they would definitely prefer to it to be sweat proof, noise cancellation, lightweight, long battery life, Bluetooth. Expanding this query, what will it do? It will help in recognizing the right keywords and right products uh, will come up. And uh, this is what again LLMs can help with. So for the uh, misspelled queries, vernacular queries, which are the tail queries, we can do query correction or query proper understanding with LLMs. And for head queries, what companies do? They do query expansion. Now talking about how to use them in uh, production. We know that LLMs have slow inference rate, so which makes them unsuitable for real time uses. What companies usually do is they uh, leverage LLMs efficiently during the training phase. So what happens in the training phase, both the misspelled queries and the corrected query will go through the retrieval model. So let me take a slight detour. What happens in recommendation system? Modern day recommendation systems are built in two phases. The first is retrieval phase where the uh, for a query, the top 10,000 or 20,000 items are retrieved. In the ranking phase, we rank them according to the user's taste. For example, some user may prefer cheap products, some users may prefer highly rated products, some users may prefer branded or costly products. So that can happen in the ranking stage. But in the retrieval, when we are picking up the relevant catalogs uh, for the query, uh, we can do adjustment in those models. And one such model is two tower model where you have query, you have the product and the idea is you map query and item or query or product in the same dimension that query embedding and product embedding are comparable and you can do a dot product to find which are the relevant product for this query. Now this is a uh, very efficient approach uh, for the retrieval but now we have to do the correction for misspelled queries or uh, the query expanded queries so what companies usually do is uh, they will also have one more task here which can be the query query alignment to ensure both the misspelled query or the non-expanded query and the expanded query and the corrected query they have similar type of embedding the query query alignment will do that the misspelled query and the corrected query are having similar representation and since embeddings are better in semantic understanding, little bit of mistakes here and there, still the query will start getting mapped 
to the uh, similar embedding because we know that embeddings are based on semantic similarity so this is how uh, the adjustments are done during the training that is there can be one query query alignment uh, task which does the uh, which ensures that the misspelled queries are also getting mapped to the correct query and finally because it's mapped to the correct query product matching is happening uh, in the inference time no such query correction is required the model learns to embed both the corrected and the erroneous uh, queries into the same embedding space moving on to the next use case the next use case is from yelp yelp is a company which provides uh, users to go through the reviews of other businesses and products so uh, yelp is into reviews business and in reviews one thing uh, very common is I, I, or very important is to identify reviews or instances of threats, harassment, lewdness, personal attacks, hate speech, vulgarity and so on. And LLMs we know they excel at understanding the language. But it can't be used in real time due to the slow inference rate. Maybe in future we have the SLMs which is small language models which are very fast but currently these uh, LLMs are not suitable for real time inferencing. So we can definitely use the goodness of them in clever ways. How can we do it? The first way is batch processing for ambiguous cases so what you can do is you can have an in-house classifier which classifies these reviews as bad or harmful or not harmful and wherever the classifier is confused that is the probabilities are kind of neutral 0.5 or 0.48 or 0.56 kind of neutral probability we can pass those cases in batches to an LLM for tagging them and once tagged they can be added back to the training data uh, so that in-house classifier can improve its accuracy during the next training phase. Other way is that you start with a small high quality training data set where the labels were generated by LLM and this uh, small golden data set can uh, be used to train the in-house classifier because it's an in-house classifier that will be very fast it won't use many billion parameter model it will be like few uh, millions or few thousands of parameters of model so it will be fast but the training data that you are using to train it is very high quality generated from LLM or third way you can use the hybrid approach you can train an in-house classifier still wherever the in-house classifier is confused get those corrected through LLM add back to your training phase and this can be a continuous feedback loop so this is how Yelp used it um, just extending that use case what uh, marketplaces like Facebook OLX and all other marketplaces they uh, do is they list the products for sale the users can list their products for sale uh, and one problem is that sometimes inappropriate or prohibited items can be sold in the marketplaces, right? And nowadays, LLMs don't just understand text, they are, they are multi-model, they are having multi-model capabilities and they can understand both textual and visual content, which makes them very good for identifying and flagging inappropriate listings. Let me give some real examples. There was a case where um, marijuana was sold in Amazon as curry patta and there is a news article I have this screen snapshot is from that news article article other cases some websites were uh, selling lethal knife so what uh, multi-model capabilities based LLM will do is it will identify the visual of Im uh, products uh, images uploaded the tags the reviews and other uh, returns all those data along with the visual understanding of image the textual understanding of product description to label whether it's a harmful product or not and on that the in-house classifier can be trained to make better decision and wherever the in-house classifier uh, is confused those can be passed in batches to this multimodal LLM to generate high quality labels and this can be a continuous feedback approach I will give one more example uh, since these LLMs are getting very good at multi-model capabilities, uh, companies are also using them to identify all the product attributes. For example, this sandal, it's not just a sandal, right? It has patterns and if you see the, it's a, it's a heel and what is the material, what are the colors and so on. So what identifying these uh, multi attributes of color, material, brand, patterns helps company to organize this data in a proper way which is called uh, taxonomy in e-commerce e world so if you see this is an example from Mintra where this type of heel doesn't just go to uh, uh, heels it goes to home footwear heels and heels pointed so all the pointed heels will come here and Mintra is able to organize it properly because it knows the taxonomy all the attributes of the product now sometimes when the seller uploads they may miss out on some attributes or sometimes they also don't know which attributes to tag now LLM you can do the prompt engineering that I want this 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 these attributes of this product and give me in JSON format and once you have this high quality data that has been tagged by LLM you can even train an in-house classifier to do it for all the products in your uh, inventory and this is how high quality taxonomy can be created which can help in better organizing the products for any company uh, next I will talk about conversational search. So uh, we are well familiar with uh, key keywords based search. We will go to Amazon, we will type something, let's say peanut butter or we will type uh, give pants, uh, black pants, jeans pants and so on. But now it is a new type of search is coming up which is called conversational search or powerful chatbot type search. 
जेनरेटिव ए आई इनेबल्स यूजर टू इंटरेक्ट विद सर्च प्लेटफॉर्म यूजिंग नेचुरल कन्वर्जेशनल क्वेरीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल कस्टमर कैन आस्क आई नीड अ ब्लैक लेदर जैकेट अंडर हंड्रेड डॉलर्स एंड देर कैन बी फॉलो अप क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द चैट बॉट और एल एम द सिस्टम कैन हैंडल फॉलो अप इंट्रेक्शन सच एज डू यू हैव ए साइज इन माइंड डू यू वॉन्ट इट इन मीडियम वट अबाउट अदर कलर्स बाय एंड बाई रिमेंबरिंग द कंटेक्स सिंस यू बॉट ए जैकेट डू यू वॉन्ट ए जीन्स एज वेल इट कैन प्रोवाइड मोर डायनेमिक एंड रेलिवेंट सजेशन विच कैन हेल्प इन बेटर यूजर सेटिस्फेक्शन सो दिस इज काइंड ऑफ कॉल कन्वर्जेशनल सर्च विच इज बिकमिंग वेरी प्रोमिनेंट इन द एल एल एम वर्ल्ड नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑल्सो आई फील मोस्ट ऑफ अस हैव यूज इट रिव्यू समराइजेशन नाउ इट इज वट एमेजॉन इज डूइंग देर विल बी मल्टीपल कस्टमर रिव्यूज इट इज एक्यूमुलेटिंग ऑल ऑफ दैम टू जनरेट दिस काइंड ऑफ रिव्यू समरी एंड ऑल्सो हाईलाइटिंग विच आर द ग्रीन पॉइंट्स एंड विच आर सम रेड फ्लैग्स इन द प्रोडक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर दिस पंचिंग बैग मे बी द फिलेबिलिटी इज एन इशू बट क्वालिटी वैल्यू फॉर मनी ऑल दीज आर गुड एंड ओवरऑल वट कस्टमर्स हैव टू से Uh, and how this can be created using LLMs? We know LLMs have a uh, token length limit. So what uh, can be done is we can divide the reviews into a small manageable section. Let's say you take fifty to hundred reviews. For each review, you generate the summary as capturing the key points, as well as you ask LLM in the prompt engineering to also extract the topics and uh, sentiments. And you can also keep count of frequency of that topic appearing. And once you have this for let's say good amount of reviews, let's say thousand, two thousand reviews, you can start. merging the summaries you can again use llm prompt engineering to merge the summaries and you can tell it that merge uh, similar type of topics and also you can keep a frequency count of each topic so that you can finally give uh, 10 12 uh, main topics and and depending on the sentiment you can give this green or red coloring to the topics and once these topics are clicked you can even do a rack to identify which reviews uh, were associated with this topic Uh, next and which is my personal favorite use case of llm is ai powered personalized education so uh, you can give all the uh, textbooks and course material to llm and ask it to generate diverse question answer pairs multiple choice short answers essay based questions uh, from textbooks or course material to support assessment and practice and the best part is it can be personalized analyze students performance on different topics areas and then generate targeted content and adaptive question set depending on the areas which requires more reinforcement or weaker concept for example if it's mathematics mathematics can be probability and statistics it can be linear algebra and it can be calculus let's say the person is good with linear algebra and probability and statistics but is not very good with calculus so more focus will be on calculus more questions will be generated from calculus maybe uh, there will be uh, in the next follow up test there will be lesser questions from other topic but the more questions from the topics where a student is weaker which becomes like personalized education and you can do it for every student in a uh, different way depending on their levels and their focus and requirements and also you can have lesson summaries you can summarize the education materials into concise structured lessons or flash cards enabling efficient revision students can interact with the system to classify to clarify doubts and receive context aware explanation whenever they are confused they can ask okay why is this uh, answer for uh, the uh, the multiple choice this and not that give explain me sim in simple terms explain me the uh, previous fundamentals which will help me grasp this answer and so on Also, LLMs are getting used for structured case summaries for legal analysis. So, what happens in uh, legal cases? A lot of documentation is done. Court will hear the case, give next uh, dates, and highlight the main pointers and so on. So, what LLMs can do is they can automatically distill court case transcripts into structured summaries, capturing the key arguments, legal precedents, rulings, and outcomes for efficient legal research analysis. So, what uh, lawyers and other legal people can do? They can um, search through various cases, the main. Uh, precedents rulings key arguments and uh, depending on that prepare their uh, case or arguments in a proper way so it's getting used a lot in legal uh, analysis as well because legal uh, things have requires lot of documentation and wherever documentation or text is involved llms are super good in understanding it summarizing it highlighting the key arguments legal precedents and so on so these are some of the use cases that we saw we saw the legal analysis use case the personalized education use case the amazon's review summarization the new type of search which is conversational search we looked at uh, bettering the e-commerce taxonomy through multimodal capabilities of llm again i using llms to identify risky products sold over marketplaces and yelp is using it to uh, identify harmful versus non harmful reviews and companies are using it uh, like misho and other e-commerce companies are using it for their search use case as well to better personalize and better understand user intent and provide better search experience so with that we come uh, to the end of this video hope you like the video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye